everybody welcome back to my channel today we're gonna to do a diy dollar tree farmhouse service wear we're gonna do two of them today and it's get them while they're hot summer items so you're gonna use a square bowl and a square plate and then we're also going to redo this bowl we're going to make them so that you can this one especially that you can put food in it and then you're going to use this tall drinking glass we're going to use that for the riser these are all summer items get them while they're hot we're going to use some spray paint as well as some black paint or sharpie we're going to use paint on the bowl sharpie on the other dishes um, and i want to show you that i really quickly I shared this on Instagram for a few hours. I took a poll to see because I actually made it to be two ways, either the bowl on the bottom or the plate on the bottom. And actually, I even designed a third way in my head. I just didn't pull it, which was the bowl on the bottom and the plate on the top. Um, but what I wanted to do is to be able to make some actual food service wear. So um, what we're going to do really quick is the bottom of this um this drinking cup kind of bows out a little bit and doesn't really hug the underside of the bowl or plate very well. So we're just going to take our, our uh, box cutter, utility knife, whatever you have. And we're just going to score it a few times so it has a little give and we'll push down on it. And just make sure that it, it can divot in a little bit is what I'm saying. So now we're going to take our plastic wear outside for spray painting. Now, my original thought was big bowl on the bottom with chips, little bowl on the top with dip. Um, and the big bowl, we actually put the contact paper in there, which is food safe. Obviously you put it on your shelves, <laughs> but, <laughs> um, and then the bowl, of course, we weren't going to paint the inside of the bowl, which of course then makes it food safe. The only paint that would have touched any food is what we put on the riser. Now I did a lot of research about protecting paint and coating paint and making painted surfaces food safe. So just do whatever research you're comfortable with. But for the couple of hours that chips are going to stay next to this, it really is like next to this upright thing. It's really not a huge travesty. It's not a lot of food, you know, a lot, of, not a lot of stuff will get leached onto your food basically and you try to use non-toxic paint anyway um, but basically really all the things that I found were as long as the paint is um, like has a ceiling on it so you could seal it you could do epoxy sealing if you want to really be safe um, or you could just you know um, basically use like a gloss paint which will basically have a seal already um, try to stay away from the flat paints, I guess. But do your own research, obviously. Um, I have been eating on painted things forever and ever, and I'm not dead yet. But that doesn't mean it's safe. That's just what I do, okay? But to make this bowl um, food safe, basically, what we're going to do is we're going to take a piece of contact paper. Now, this is 100% a copycat from Nicole at week this week's nest which I loved and I kind of told her in the comments that I was going to steal that right away um, because it was such a, a a simple project b it was totally right up my alley as you guys know um, I love this black twall it's contact paper I actually have been using it for like I don't know I want to say 10 years even before I had a channel at least 10 years I'm going to say it's even more than that because I covered a trunk that I had in my home in 2008 so um, I mean it's been in my home since 2008 but uh, I think it's actually older than that anyhow I digress um, but I really love this idea what I did was I um, used a seven inch plate from the Dollar Tree um, that's I threw it in the bottom of the bowl and saw that it was bigger than the emblem down there and then I went ahead and I used that as a template to cut out it will come up the sides a little bit but I will tell you my sticker emblem that the factory at Dollar Tree put in the bottom of my bowl was actually off-centered so I couldn't really make it exactly the same size bottom as the bowl anyway I needed to make it a little bit wider to go up the sides now if you saw what I did against the edge of the table all I did was whenever you have a piece of paper that's curling on you all you have to do is rub it against the edge of the table like with your hand pressed on the corner of the table and then pull it in the opposite way than it's curling and then it'll just help it lay out a little flatter. Um, you can do this with paper, any paper that you don't have to worry about it like because you may add you may add wrinkles in it so um, if you don't have to worry about that or if it's heavy duty like this vinyl um, then absolutely. 
And then I laid it in. It was a little bigger, bigger even than I wanted. So I trimmed it down just like a eighth of an inch, hardly at all. And then I did, you know, peel back one piece, lay it down, center it up, lay it down, pull the paper. You know how we do contact paper. Now I will tell you, and I don't know if it's because I live with a smoker or what, but my white background was a little yellower than the white bowl. So keep that in mind if that bothers you. Um, I don't know if it's just because, like I said, my contact paper has been in the house for a long time. Could be why. It could be just it looks different. So um, now the only paint we're going to put on this is we're going to use some of the uh, folk art black chalk paint. And we're just going to lay it on the edges of the bowl. Obviously, there is a small chance that food may touch this, but um, it's not really sitting on the food. The food will be sitting in the bowl. Um, so that's why I wanted to go ahead and just add that to the edge of the black, uh, the black to the edge of the rim. But another option could be if you have the black contact paper, you can like trace out the, make a strip and stick it down. You could do that as well. Um, but I'm just going to go with this. Like I said, I'm, I'm fine with it. It's not... I'm not going to keep chips in there 24-7. Who's going to keep their chips out 24-7? And if it was as a fruit bowl, you wash your fruit before you use it. You know, who knows what's happening to fruit before you eat it. So you have to wash it before you eat it anyway. So here's where I showed everybody. Um, basically, I put together the pieces. I wanted to show you that the top of the cup actually goes down um, because of the... Um, remember I told you that the bottom of the cup kind of bows out a little bit? Well, the bowl kind of does that too, and so does the plate, um, kind of the very, very center. It doesn't really lay perfectly flat, or mine didn't anyway. So I wanted to put the open side down so it would kind of hug the middle of that bowl. And I was just showing you there the different combinations, bowl on the bottom, plate on the top, bowl on the top, plate, you know what I mean? So um, this is about where um, I decided to make it look enamel wear. You don't have to do this. You can skip this step entirely. You can also paint the rim of that bowl white if you want to just and do that as well. Um, but this is where I just took some sandpaper um, because we painted the bowls black first. And the reason if I'm sorry, I realized I just didn't tell you why I did that. We paint everything black first to cover the print. Um, I just find it a lot easier to do one coat of really good black paint under uh, one coat of white paint. Otherwise, it may take a couple of coats to get over whatever's printed on the bowl of white paint. So either way, whatever works, whatever was easier for you. But also another reason we do it is then when we sand away some of the white paint, we could expose some of that black paint um, come up on the edge. But if you don't expose enough black paint or you want more, you can always add it um, after you're done sanding. Okay. So after we're done sanding all of the parts, I um, sanded that that upright as well but I will tell you because it's on a soft rubbery kind of plastic it took off all of the paint it took off the black and the white at the same time so I didn't mind that was not objectionable to me I just went back with my black sharpie wherever I exposed that pink cup and I filled it in and then I just took um, the Gorilla Hot Glue stuck like a charm because it looks really good on plastic but if you're more comfortable using an E6000 or a gorilla glue a crazy glue or the crazy glue gel glue a lot of people like you go ahead and you use that or any combination thereof okay so this is where I'm taking my big fat fake sharpie from the Dollar Tree and I'm just going ahead and I'm going around the edge of the top serving bowl um, just to make it look black and I'm trying to do the edge where I sand it sort of on the outside and on the very top but not on the inside but I will show you here how I did I made a mistake and we just took one of my famous alcohol swabs <laughs> that I use for my testing my blood sugar and you can wipe away that sharpie right away it's best to do it while it's wet you don't have to scrub so hard um, then I just went back and did the rest to touch up and wherever I made a mistake I just took an alcohol swab again and I just wiped it away okay now, I really like using this Sharpie, this fake Sharpie from the Dollar Tree. I know sometimes it's a hit or miss item because they do sell out when they get them. Um, but I really like using it because of its wide edge. Now, Dollar Tree, I noticed last time, does have permanent poster markers, which are like the black, bad kind that, you know, smell really toxic. <laughs> I don't mean bad, but they, yeah. Anyway, you have to say like you're 18 or older to buy them, those ones. Um, and those are permanent, which would also be really good for this. But just be careful. Um, if you do make a mistake, get it while it's wet, okay? And 
Now we're going to do the same thing with the plate. Now with the plate, I did go ahead and decide to, and now I'm going to wear it, like, like wound it. Um, I went around its edge and then skipped onto the plate in a few spots. And then, of course, I put a chip in it um, at one point. But I don't know what it is. I just, I'm like addicted. I'm addicted to making things look like chipped enamel wear. Forgive me, please. <laughs> and so if you noticed from the thumbnail, then um, I'm about to post here what the two choices were. Um, you could see that the plate on the bottom one by a landslide, really. Um, but if you um, are going to put the plate on the bottom, then realize that the plate surface is what spray painted so you definitely want to seal that if you're going to put sandwiches or anything on it unless of course you're going to put down a doily or paper doil or paper napkins underneath it you can do that as well just to just to make it that much more safe okay so now we're going to go ahead and we're going to um just make sure it fits right you want to make sure that you line the square bowl up with the square plate when you go ahead and do that. So now I'm showing you here how it looks in the bowl. Now the only suggestion I'm gonna make is if you use the bowl is to cut out the piece of contact paper so that you're gluing directly from the cup to the bowl. That's my only tip that I'm gonna throw if you do decide to use the bowl on the bottom, okay? So the plate won. So here we are a couple hours later after the, after the vote. Uh, the votes were tallied and what I'm doing is I'm just taking my ruler and I'm measuring I'm not measuring with a number I'm actually just holding my finger to a certain point and trying to make it even all the way around then made sure that the two squares lined up circled the outside of the cup with a pencil you can't see the pencil unfortunately on camera but um, that's where I knew how to land it once I was done gluing it and here it is I just put Gorilla Hot Glue along the rim, tried to clean up whatever spillage or overage was left over, and I think it's super cute. Um, like I said, it was meant to be service wear, but I'm going to show you in a second how I ended up putting the Toll Tower on my coffee bar. Um, I just set it up with tea and teaspoons, coffee cups, and then K-cups in the top. But again, you can do whatever your little heart desires with either one of them. So I hope you guys really enjoyed this tutorial. If you do, give this video a thumbs up. If you have any questions at all, even the slightest one, go ahead and leave them in the comments down below. Don't forget to share this video with friends and family. Anybody you know might be interested in seeing how to make either one of these. And if you haven't yet, click subscribe. And when you do, a little bell will pop up. When you ring that bell, YouTube will let you know whenever I upload a new video. And hurry up and get to the Dollar Tree before these summary items sell out. Don't forget to stop by to see Nicole at this week's nest. I'll link her channel in the description down below. As always, you take care, God bless, and we'll see you next time. Bye.